Welcome to this troubleshooting video. This is one of multiple videos that you'll find on my YouTube channel, which help you prepare for the CCNA certification. Now we've been told in this topology that PC1 is not able to ping PC2. So let's do some investigation. In this example, PC1 is actually an iOS router. So I'm running iOS V within GNS3. Show IP route shows us that there are no routes on this router acting as a PC. If you see output such as this, default gateway is something, and the IP routing table isn't displayed, but you see something such as ICMP redirect cache is empty, it's probably because routing has been disabled on this router. So notice this command, no IP routing. That simply turns this router into an expensive, a very basic PC. So if it was a physical router, you're essentially disabling the functionality of the router. Can PC1 ping PC2 based on the information that we've been given? As you can see in the output, it's not able to ping PC2. Notice we're getting u.u.u. .u, .u. u means unreachable. That means that PC1 is forwarding traffic to a router, which could be router one, and that router doesn't have a route to the remote network that this host resides on. Now to speed things up, I'm gonna use the command no IP domain lookup. And then I'm going to trace route to 10.1.3.2. So notice we are able to get to router one, 10.1.1.1, but router one doesn't know where to forward the traffic. So there seems to be a problem on router one. So on router one, show IP interface brief. This looks correct. This IP address is configured on this interface, gigabit 01. This IP address is configured on this interface, gigabit 00. Can router one ping router two? The answer is yes, it can. Initial ping failed because it was doing an op for the MAC address of router two. So let's have a look at the routing table, show IP route. In the output, we can see that we only have connected routes and local routes. No other routes have been learnt. We only see network 10110 and network 10120 slash 24 and the local host addresses on the interfaces of the router. We don't see a network 10130. Are we running a routing protocol on this router? So show IP protocols shows us that we are running a routing protocol. In this case, it's OSPF process one. Router ID of the router is this. It's an area border router. It has an interface gigabit zero zero in area zero. In other words, this network here is an area zero and this interface gigabit zero one is an area one. Show IP OSPF interface brief is another useful command. This gives us brief information, so we can see that gigabit 00, zero with OSPF process one is in area zero. We can also see the IP address and subnet mask used on that interface. Subnet masks need to be the same in IP version four for routers to form a neighbor relationship. Gigabit 01 is in area one of OSPF process one, and it's got this IP address. Show IP OSPF neighbor. No neighbor relationships have been formed. So OSPF is running on gigabit 00 of router one, but is not forming a neighbor relationship with router two. So let's have a look at router two and see if we can find a problem. Show IP protocols. OSPF process one is running on this router and in the output, can you see the problem? You should already be able to determine the problem by that output, but I'll also use this command, show IP OSPF interface brief to help you. Can you see the problem? Notice on router one, this interface gigabit zero zero is in OSPF area zero. On router two, gigabit zero zero is in area two. It's a requirement in OSPF that both sides of the link be configured in the same area. So show run interface gigabit zero zero shows us that this interface has been configured 
in OSPF process one, but in area two, whereas on this side, show run interface gigabit zero zero, shows us that that interface is in area zero. So to fix this, we need to change the area to area zero. So do show run interface gigabit zero zero. Notice the OSPF area has changed. Show IP OSPF interface brief. The area has now been set properly. Show IP protocols. Shows us now that this interface is in area zero, whereas gigabit zero one is in area two. Show IP OSPF neighbor. A neighbor relationship has been established. Now, why were we not seeing output on the screen? One of the reasons for that is that a logging could be disabled. So do show run pipe include log. Notice this command has been added to the running config. No logging console. I added that on purpose so that you didn't see warning messages on the screen to help you determine what the problem was. So now as an example, if I shut down gigabit zero zero, or rather I should remove the no logging console and enable logging and now go onto the interface and shut it and then no shut it. We should see output as in we should see that the interface comes up and there you go. And we should see that OSPF relationships are formed and there you go. Be careful of your logging. If you telnet or SSH to a router, don't forget to use the command termon so that you see logging on the VTY lines. Logging is enabled by default on the console, but I had purposely disabled it. So things are looking better. We have a neighbor relationship. Show IP OSPF neighbor shows us that. On this side, show IP OSPF OSPF neighbor, neighbor relationship is there. Show IP route. Notice we now see an inter area OSPF route to 10.1.3.0 via 10.1.2.2. So can this router ping the remote PC? Yes, it can. Can PC1 ping the remote PC? Yes, it can. And when we do a trace, that's also successful. Let's test in the reverse direction just to make sure everything is good. That looks fine. Notice the problem with trace route. If you don't disable IP domain lookup, the trace route is gonna take a long time while it tries to resolve the names. So I've disabled the trace. No IP domain lookup. Do the trace again, notice it's a lot quicker now because it's not doing a domain lookup. I'll do that again, there you go. So PC1 sends traffic to router two and then it sends traffic to router one and it then hits the destination. So that was an example of troubleshooting OSPF. Don't forget that with OSPF, you can configure it one of two ways. You can configure it on an interface, as I've done in this example, or you can use the network command under the writing process. I'll leave the troubleshooting of that to a separate video. So if you get a simulation in the exam, make sure that you check that OSPF areas have been configured properly. Thanks for watching. Let me know which videos you want me to record and don't forget to subscribe. All the very best.